so that you can determine whose work is whose the next time. Because if your work does not have your name next time, you'll be lost again. So please write your name on your work today. Now, um, you will have some options for metallic paint. Remember, we are trying to make our work look like it was made from metal. So if we were going to do that with metal, we would have to cast it, um, which we have talked about, um, or we would have to do a totally different process, which was not with our clay. But your clay has been through our drying stages. It went from wet clay um, over spring break into the leather hard stage and then once it went into bone dry um, it was ready to put into our kiln. Okay so we're going to start with a base color and the base color is going to be either silver or gold. Yes pick one not both. We're starting with a base color filling with one color. So I will grab my silver. Um, I'm going to now begin to um, apply this color. Now, the most important thing to note is we are using um, acrylic paint. And acrylic paint is very different from tempera. So, while you're working, um, just note that this is a little bit more permanent, so it won't wash off as easy uh, from your hands or the tables. Um, and then it's a little bit more sticky in texture, so you're gonna All right, so I do have my base color, remember base color, filled up with a metallic paint. Now it's time for us to choose an analogous color scheme, which we should have planned already. If you remember, we did our plan with our loom, we chose our shape, we practiced concentric circles for our weaving, <clears throat> and we did practice radial designs as well. Um, inspired by art through time. So you may have been more inspired by um, Mayan radial designs on their sun god symbols, or you may be more inspired by um, the radial designs within John Chamberlain's work, more of a contemporary artist with metal, um, or you may be more inspired by our metallic steampunk artworks that we looked at. Um, that is up to you on where you're drawing your inspiration from. But a radial design, which we can review now, is going to be, like we discussed last time, is going to have a center point, a center point, and then we're also going to have lines or shapes and or shapes repeating around the circle. So your radial design may already be there because on our sculpture day we did have the time and choice to add imprinted radial designs. Um, which you can see I did slightly around these edges with these circles. Um, so you can use those imprinted radial designs as a guideline for your painted radial designs. Um, I'm going to show you one more example of those before we move forward. You may find radial designs in nature. You will look at the color wheel, which are different areas of the room. There's one right behind me, over my shoulder here. There's one at the front of, actually there's two. There's one in English and one in Spanish. There's also one at the front of the room at the uh, bulletin board. So at the bulletin board, um, above the schedule. You can find that. Um, when you're looking at our color wheel, you can 
choose any three or four colors that are analogous. Remember that we are um, working in a style with concentric circles. Um, when we do our loom later, so these will still be used, these colors will be used for your concentric circles later on. Um, but with your color wheel, um, one is also located on the back, um, green cabinet. This is that one. Um, I'm going to put it back after I'm done. Um, and we can look at how we have plenty of options of colors that are analogous. That's any three or four that are located, located right next to each other. So I'm going to pause and I'm going to ask you to, to identify three or four colors that are right next to each other on the color wheel. So, the last step after we are doing our base color is going to be using your analogous color scheme you're choosing to add some radial designs, which could be lines repeating around that circle or shapes repeating around that circle. Um, so that being said, I'm going to show you that. Um, I will try to show you a different example than I did before. So uh, before, I chose... Pink, which is a tint of red, um, red, orange, and purple. So you can see on the color wheel below my face that we have orange, red, violet, and blue all in a row. So I could go ahead and add blue. I think I guess I really only stuck to mainly three colors, three or four. Um, but I could go ahead and stretch over into blue next. But I did mainly stick with orange, red, and violet or purple. So you can choose your three in a row now um, while you're thinking and looking at this color wheel which three in a row will you use that will guide your weaving choices, guide your concentric circles in your weaving as well. Um, you can think about that. So I'm going to choose a different one. I think I'm going to go for the opposite side of the wheel there which would be yellow, green, and blue. Okay. So, keeping in mind, small details, radial design. I'm going to show you my work now. Okay. Now, you can notice I do already have circles repeating around. I can use those circles as a guide. I'm rinsing my brush. I said yellow green and blue. So, I'm going to grab my yellow. I could start with filling up the circles. Guess what? I'm going to skip one. I'll tell you why in a second. All right. I could go ahead and pretend that there's a circle there. If it's not there with the imprints, you can add it on. Now that acrylic paint dries really quickly, so it's already dry. So there's my yellow circles repeating around. Um, would anyone like to guess why I skipped one? I'll pause and wait. That's right, we can do an AB pattern. So now I'm going to choose one of my other um, colors, which could be either type of blue in my paint box. I'm going to go in and fill in my B's of my AB pattern. In this paint tin over here um, that we are only um, mixing on our artwork. In here we want to keep these colors nice. But the good thing is it's almost set up like a color wheel because I have warm colors here cool colors here. So that can kind of help you with your uh, color choices. All right. So I have my green on my brush now, which I'm getting out. And with my green, my small brush, I'm going to go in to these lines that I had here. Now, maybe your brush will fit into your carvings or imprints, 
but maybe you'll just make it a little extra detail there. So I'm adding this all the way around my circle. Now the design may change a little bit, but we're going a little bit more for radial balance in our radial design rather than exact radial symmetry, which would mean it was exactly the same all the way around. So if it changes a bit as you work around, that's okay. All right, so now, as you know, when we're working with an artwork, detail is everything. So for mine that's finished, I have started with red circles, then did the orange, and then on the very end I did purple on that curved up part on the outside edge, which you can see right here. So try to find a way to make yours unique. Um, I'm going to see what we can add to this one to give it a little pop. You can work in layers, so I'm going to grab blue now, and I'm just going to add a little dot of blue right on top of my yellow swatch. And why would that work even if they mix together? Because yellow and blue make green because they're analogous. They're next to each other, so it works even if it's still wet. Good, so I added that. I'm going in with the colors. This is good reason to use analogous colors because now I'm putting blue on top of green. I know it will work because blue and green makes blue green, you're right, blue green. So now, we do want our metallic area to stay visible. We worked hard to fill in that paint. We do not want to fill up all this with color because this is supposed to be um, looking like a metallic relief sculpture. Now the last thing I'm going to note is you can go and add some details around the outside edges. I'm adding little yellow splotches now. Now, the next thing I'm going to say after adding this yellow all the way around is that maybe we could add one more color. So I'm going to ask you what our options are for adding one more color to this. If I was going to add one more, I have yellow, blue, and green. What are my options for adding one more for to be analogous? Yes, orange, because orange is next to yellow, or purple, because purple is next to blue. So I think I'm going to go with orange, because it's looking a little cool, and orange will give it some more contrast, more vibrance. So I'm going to go in with some orange little specks here. Ooh, keeping the inner edge more detailed and radial, and I think that orange is exactly what this needed. Now keep in mind you can paint this inner edge something. All right, I'm going to let you all do the work now. First, let's review. Step one is going to be painting your base color. You can start with medium fluffy and then move into the small brushes. If you're a helper, only pass out half way filled cup of water. Um, afterwards, <clears throat> when you're working, um, you want to make sure that your base color is completely filled. I would rather you spend the whole class today filling up your base color before you move into paint tins. You know what? Actually, raise your hand and get a thumbs up to make sure your base color of metallic paint is completely filled before you move into radial designs. Um, some of us may wait till next week to start radial designs with our analogous color scheme, and that's okay. Um, so, base color completely filling the front. Am I filling the back? No, not necessary just the front with either gold or silver paint. Next, you're going to choose your analogous color scheme, any three or four next to each other on the wheels, which are around the art room. And lastly, then you'll add radial design details, which repeat around the circle. You can fill in imprints or add your own. And then we will start our warp and our weft next week. All right.